In this video we shall continue to look at the impact of introducing inheritance to an existing project. This video continues from a previous one where we introduced a post superclass to version 1 of the network project. There we moved the duplicate code associated with just the timestamp field from message post and photo post to their superclass. In this video we shall continue the refactoring process but with particular emphasis on the constructors of superclass and subclasses. Another area of duplication in message post and photo post is the username field, and we'd like to move this to the superclass. Currently this field is initialized via a parameter to the constructor of the subclasses. We're interested in looking at the impact that moving the field will have on its initialization. For reasons we shall see later, we'll also add an accessor for username. Simply moving the field is easy. But how should it be initialized from the subclass constructor? We could define a set username mutator in post and call that from the subclass constructor, but there are two problems with that. Firstly, calling it could easily get forgotten and the field be left uninitialized. Secondly, we don't really want to be able to change the username, which is what a set mutator is usually intended for. Rather, we want to initialize it when the object is created and then leave it unchanged. Providing a mutator method in the superclass suggests that the field is mutable, which it is not meant to be. The primary role of a constructor is to set up a new object's fields so that the object is in a valid state to be used immediately after the constructor is completed. That's why we always expect to see a very close association between the fields of a class and the body of the constructor. It follows that the initialization of the username field in the post class is really the responsibility of the constructor in post. This also matches the idea that POST is an ordinary class. There's nothing about it that indicates it can only be used as part of a subclass. So we really want to write the constructor of POST as follows. The question now remains as to how we can pass the author parameter from the subclass constructor to the superclass constructor. Up to this point, the only way we've seen for a constructor to be called is to create an object. However, we don't want to do that here because we don't want a separate post object. The post fields and methods are part of the message post object that's already in the process of being created. The answer is supplied by a new piece of Java, the super keyword. Adding a call to super at the start of the subclass constructor means call the superclass constructor at this point. Since the superclass constructor takes an author parameter, we supply that in the call. Now when we compile, we see that we just have to replace the direct access to username from the display method with a call to the accessor we provided earlier. The reasons for this were discussed in a previous video. Let's use the debugger to explore what goes on when we create a message post object. We put a breakpoint on the super call and create a message post. When we step into the super call, we move into post and see the initialization process. Stepping on eventually takes us back to the message post constructor. which then completes. Let's now look at some of the rules associated with using a super call. 
Firstly, suppose we forget to include a call. The compiler gives us an error message to say that it cannot find a constructor POST. What does this mean? Because we know that POST does have a constructor. What the message actually means is that the compiler cannot find what is called a NOARG constructor. That is, a constructor that doesn't take any arguments or parameters. This is because if we fail to put a call to super in the subclass constructor, then the compiler will insert a default call to super without any parameters. If we put that in explicitly and compile, we see the same error message. This call is incorrect because we must pass the author parameter to the constructor. It has to be super author. Secondly, suppose we try to delay the super call until we've initialized the subclasses fields. Once again, we see exactly the same error message as before. This is because the call to super must be the first statement in the constructor. This ensures that all of the superclass components of the new object are initialized before the subclass components are. In summary, it's important to understand the initialization process that takes place when a subclass object is created. The superclass constructor is responsible for initializing the fields defined in the superclass. The subclass constructor must call the superclass constructor as its very first action. The call is made by using the super keyword, passing any required parameters. If an explicit call to super is not included, the compiler will insert a default one. This will only be valid if the superclass has a noarg constructor.